everybody out there on YouTube land, um, today, tonight I'm going to be showing you guys how to catch, clean, and uh, prepare to eat gar, uh, alligator gar, big alligator gar. Um, check it out, like, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, Lake Shore States, Slidell, Louisiana. Uh, it's springtime, and the gar start moving into these back bayous and, and canals, and we have these green lights in the water, Let's see. Normally we have speckled trout, redfish. But when the gar come around, uh, all the game fish disappear. There's some brave ducks out there swimming in the light. And gar fish eat ducks. Um, so periodically I see a big gar fish swimming in the light. So I'm going to show you how I, I, I catch them. Now, uh, first thing, uh, gar fish, their mouth are real bony and toothy. It's really hard to hook them. Um, you gotta let them swallow it. Sometimes it takes up to 10 minutes of them running around with the bait in their mouth before they even try to swallow it. And the tendency is for a fisherman to, to, to snag the line. They just open their mouth and the, and the, the hook comes out. So uh, I do a couple of things. First of all, a regular pole that bends uh, doesn't have the, the strength to really get that hook in, in that toothy part if, if they haven't swallowed it yet. So what I like to do is use this. Now this is the kind of pole it's very short and sturdy. This is used for trolling and catching big uh, tuna offshore. Okay, big 300 pound tuna on this pole. Okay, we're not going to catch a 300 pound gar, but maybe a 50 or 70 pound gar. Uh, and the pole doesn't bend. It's very, very sturdy. So uh, when you when you jank, jerk on the uh, the pole, there's no bend at all. Boom. It pulls the line. Also, you got to use the right kind of line, and you really can't see it. But I'm using a uh, 70 or 90 pound braid. Uh, it's like twine. All right, now garfish are really toothy, so they're going to break that, they'll cut right through it. So on the end of the line, I have a wire. That's actually a shark rig or a cobia rig. On the end of that wire, I have two hooks. Now some people will say use a treble hook. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the treble hook, they don't set correctly. I use two hooks, a smaller hook and a big circle hook. <clears throat> On the end of those hooks, I'll put two minnows. Here's what we're going to be using for bait. These are pogies. Okay. Um, doesn't matter if they're dead or alive. Uh, garfish will eat anything. Now, at about two feet above the hook, you put a cork. One of the other things you're going to need, especially if you're like on a deck like this, um, I mean, it's kind of hard to, to pick up a, a 50 or 70 pound garfish on a string. Um, so I like to keep a gaff handy. All right, a gaff. And you get them. Now, you can't just hit the, the gar with the gaff like a regular fish, like a tuna. It's not going to go through the thick skin. So uh, you got to like be very careful and get it right under their gill and, and pull them up. And they're going to fight you. They're going to jump and fight and try to bite you. Uh, just you get them up on the deck and you just keep them still. Uh, some people like to shoot them. This is a, a, a residential neighborhood. I just hit them in the head with a hammer until their brains are all over the place and they stop trying to bite me. But let's see if we can catch one. It's a perfect night. The water's calm, it's clear, there's a full moon. So, without any further ado, I'm gonna cast the line. Now, it's kind of hard for me to the film and catch a gar at the same time. Hell, it's almost impossible to catch a big gar by yourself and, uh, and get it in without some kind of hassle. Uh, so I'm gonna put the phone down for a sec and uh, I'll get back to you in a minute. All right, I kind of got to gotta apologize. Um, uh, I threw the line out, and it happened a little bit quicker than I thought, and uh, kind of forgot about the video. It's kind of an adrenaline rush when, when you got a, a huge, giant monster garfish tied on the line. But uh, gotta check this out. This thing is huge. I mean, look at this bad boy. I mean, that's a hammer. That's that's the gaff. That's the net he destroyed. 
I tried to do something different and ruin my net. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big old starfish right there. I don't know if you can see. Look at those teeth. Man, he is almost as ugly as me. Ooh. Okay, it's uh, it's the next morning, uh, and I'm gonna show you how to clean this thing. All right, well, just give you an idea just how big this guy is. Woo wee! There's a lot of food. All right, so this is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need your, your fillet knife. You need a, a drill, and this bit is it's a cutoff wheel. It's used for uh, cutting metal, and of course you use your safety first. You use your safety glasses. All right. Uh, if you look close, they're like the scales on this thing are like hard, hard plastic. Uh, really tough to get into. Now some people use a machete or a Ginsu scissors or something. Um, well, I live in the 21st century, so I'm going to use that. Alright, All right. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put a straight line from about right here. We're going to cut a straight line straight down the back. And then we're going to cut another line here, 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 and here. So it makes, makes like a big wide H. Back. So. All right, as you can see, line straight down the back, and then out here, same way on the other side, and then across it. His head all the way around. Is it on? Alright, so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a fillet knife, a very sharp fillet knife, and we're going to cut down here. Alright, what we're going to do is take, take a piece of the corner right here of this uh, of the shell. Beautiful thing. All right, and then now against the straight line, there's like a, a separator a wall. All right, uh, a, a very hard memory. You kind of just go against that that wall right there. Like Alright, so when you're finished, you should be completely opened up like this. That's that membrane I'm talking about right there. It goes down the back. And uh, just open them up. And then you have two big, nice, lean pieces of meat. Now I'm about to show you how to cook them. Look at those teeth. Alright, so next time y'all are sw swimming in a canal or a bayou in South Louisiana, and you're saying, oh, there's no sharks out here. Well, I'd say, uh, I ain't worried about the sharks. Let's go eat the sucker up. Alright, so we're in the kitchen now, and as you can see, I cut half in half. So I got a quarter of a piece right here. I washed it off in the sink, and now I'm going to cook it. Uh, now I'm going to cut it up in pieces to fry it, ok? 
okay? You just take a nice little chunk like that. You just, uh, all right, so now we're gonna, as you can see down here, uh, we got them cut up into little pieces. Uh, now we're gonna put them in a bowl and we're gonna marinate them. I'm using uh, teriyaki marinade. And we're gonna marinate it for about six hours. Uh, you could marinate it uh, 24 hours if you want, but I, I found after about six hours you really can't tell the difference. All right. In there. <clears throat> All right, so we it's been soaking for the last six hours. We got it in. Uh, we strained all the, the stuff off, so it's, uh, the meat's turned from white to like a, a, a brown. And we're gonna put it in fish fry. And just fry it up, just like you can fry any other kind of fish. Drop it in. Drop, drop, drop it in. <clears throat> Alright, so we had the meat in teriyaki sauce. Uh, teriyaki turns the white meat uh, really dark brown. So you really can't judge by the color. It, immediately, uh, the fryer makes it almost look burnt. So you, you have to fry a little chunk like that for about, like this, for about uh, four and a half, five minutes. <clears throat> and you take it out. You notice when you cut it open, you see, it's white on the inside, and it is definitely not burnt. Mm. So good. Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle.